Charity McGrath is the official PC candidate for Newmarket Aurora constituency. She's a mother, a businesswoman, a cancer survivor, and the chair of York Region's largest food bank, and she's passionate about helping Ontarians. Please join me in welcoming her to the show. Thank you for being here, Charity. Thank you for asking me to be here. All right, so you you want to represent the people of Newmarket Aurora. Mm -hmm. Yes. And why should they choose you? Well, I think really what it comes down to is provincial government, we need more honesty and integrity. And mm -hmm. I do believe that those two qualities um, are extremely important to me and I emulate those those qualities, if I say humbly, mm -hmm. um, integrity is extremely important and to me and as always has been uh, to me. So I'd like to um, work as hard as I can to put the people of Newmarket Aurora first, mm -hmm. um, bring integrity back to provincial government, like I said, but it's really important. We see the things that are happening right now. Um, I have a passion for provincial politics and so those are some of the reasons why you know, I've decided to run. All right, so one of the things that the people have a little bit concern about when they are um, electing or selecting the candidates, they say, well, you know what, we, um, people come to us and they make all these beautiful speeches. How do we know mm -hmm. that you mean it and you're going to continue with it after you get elected? Yeah, that's a very good question. I think that if we look a lot of people say the right things, but really their actions rarely match up with what their their integrity or their what they're saying. Um, I like to look at my record. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned the food bank, um, and so tell that, us more about it because yeah. not everybody knows your right. track record. Right. So I think that's um, was a passion of mine before. I've always loved provincial politics, but really helping other people has been um, extremely important to me. Mm -hmm. So my record is that of helping other people, running a food bank, uh, chairing a food bank. I started off as the director, uh, eventually worked my way up to becoming the chair. Um, we are one of the larger food banks, largest food banks in York Region. Um, and I'm really proud of the work that we do and the thousands of families and children that we help. It's extremely important mm -hmm. that someone be uh, a person of deed and not just words. So, um, you know, food insecurity is, is a big deal mm -hmm. and it affects, you know, young and old alike and mainly, you know, those that need the most help, you know, is a very important thing for me to reach those people. and. We supply um, hundreds of thousands of pounds of food, mm -hmm. um, not just dried goods, but we also supply fresh, item, fresh goods, um, cottage cheese and milk. Um, dairy products are typical. We do do fresh um, carrots and potatoes. We work with um, farmers in the Holland Landing and uh, we get donations from them as well. We also get uh, turkeys or chickens from farmers or uh, Walmart. Mm -hmm. So these are things we're, I'm really, really proud of that we supply um, a lot of the food pantries in mm -hmm. my riding. Okay. So Newmarket Food Pantry, Aurora Food Pantry, um, In From the Cold, these are just some um, locations that we supply them with their food. We're uh, a food hub, so we're much larger than the food banks that people think of a food bank. They think that's where you go get your, your food if you're in need, if mm -hmm. you're not feeling well, or if you're going through a hard time. Um, so we're the ones that supply all of these food banks or food, they're actually pantries with their food. So I'm really proud of the work we do um, and helping many people around my riding in York Region. All right, well, that's really awesome because there are so many people who need help. And uh, unfortunately, Ontario is not going in the right direction. Yeah. Yes, because uh, many people like me are concerned about the direction of our province. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there are uh, very few people who have good jobs. This used to be the economic engine of yes. our nation, uh, but we are no longer That's uh, right. in that position. So people don't have jobs. and. Um, 
you know, young people don't have the opportunities and entrepreneurs, people who are the job creators, right. uh, don't have the, all the incentives and all the support that they need. So how will you address those things? Well, I think one of the major issues, um, as you already know, is hydro. Mm -hmm. So I think most people don't realize the impact that the rising hydro rates have had on Ontario. They don't want the privatization of hydro, but they don't really understand why. Mm. Um, so I'll give you a little bit of inside scoop, okay. so to speak, on what's happening with hydro and why it correlates with me and even what I've done with the food bank. Okay. So on average right now, a lot of people don't realize that hydro rates have not gone up uh, 20%, 30%. Even some say 50%. Um, I've just learned that on average, it's gone up a shocking 300%. Yep. So obviously you're taking rural properties as well as residential and um, commercial. But if you think about what, what does that mean for the average person? What does that mean for the business owner that has to run a grocery store? Mm -hmm. And their hydro bill at one time maybe used to be three or four thousand dollars a month to keep all the fridges active, the lights, to keep it air conditioned in the summer. It's now some people are actually having to pay twenty thousand yeah. dollars every single month mm -hmm. just to keep the hydro in the grocery stores. Mm. So what that's do what's happening right now is that's trickling down into you as or the average Ontario, the consumer. Mm -hmm. So right now we see, okay, we were able to buy a loaf of bread at 99 cents, and then it went up to $1.70. Mm -hmm. Now it's two fifty. Mm -hmm. Oh, now it's sneaking up to close to $3 for the same loaf of bread that you used to be able to purchase for 99 cents is now $3. On average, you're getting a quarter of what you used to be able to get in groceries. If you spent $100 a week, um, you're getting on average what you used to be able to purchase probably for two to $300 in groceries. So it's a huge impact. And now on top, you have to deal with your hydro bill at home. So you're getting much less food. Mm -hmm. If mothers have three children they have to feed, they can't necessarily skim back on the amount of food that they can feed their children, right? Of that's that's a necessity, that's something. And you have to have the lights on at home and you have to make sure that, you know, those bills are paid as well. So it does correlate, both hydro does affect, has a huge impact. How I believe um, we are gonna change it is we're not going to sign any more of these scandalous green energy contracts. Okay, so what about everything that's happened? What's the plan to unravel it? Right. Because that's what everybody wants to know. Right. Because people do uh, know what it's doing. We know of people who have actually had to sell their houses. Right, exactly. Because they just couldn't afford it. Right. Right, and no one should ever have to do that over hydro bills. Exactly. Right? So what's the plan? How are we going to unravel this? So the plan is first to address those that are in need. Seniors, um, as I was saying, the seniors are struggling. Most vulnerable. And yeah. I've seen a huge influx of people having to use the food bank. Mm. So they're choosing right now to either heat their homes in the winter or eat. It's as simple as that, really, because hydro is impacting people on a profound level. You mentioned that I'm a cancer survivor, so I will say, what does somebody do if they've been diagnosed with cancer mm -hmm. and they have to go through chemotherapy and they can't work mm -hmm. and they're self-employed? Mm -hmm. What do they do? They still have to pay their bills. They still have to eat. And this is the reality of hydro is much, much more serious than people realize. Last year alone, in 2016, we dumped enough 
clean green energy over Niagara Falls to light more than 600,000 homes. Does that sound right to you? Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous. And now the provincial liberal government has purchased a dirty coal burning plant. Yes. And they're saying, oh, clean green energy, we need clean green energy, and none of us are in dispute of that. Mm -hmm. But we have the cleanest, greenest green energy. Already in, available. Already available yeah. um, with Niagara Falls. So it's very serious, and they're trying to pull a, the wool over our eyes. They're saying, we're going to bring your hydro rates down while they're actually approving a, yet another rate increase. Yes. So it's very serious taking your taxpayers, the taxpayers of Ontario, their dollars to now what? Advertise that they're dropping, they're dropping the rates, yet they're actually approving rate increases. Yes, and I think it's really foolish to, to do something like that because people know Right in this day and age of social media, people are informed, and when it hits you mm -hmm. so close to home, then people know what's going on. So um, this is really important, and that's why we wanted you to be here so that you could tell, because people want to know. Uh, they're looking for change. They're yep. looking for a break. They're looking for honest right. uh, politicians, people who can represent them. Put exactly. them first, yeah. right? So it appears to me that you are one of those people. Thank and uh, so um, why don't you just look into the camera and talk to people and tell them what can they expect to see in you as their representative? I believe that putting the residents of Ontario and Newmarket Aurora first is of the utmost importance. Right now, we have the highest debt of any sub-sovereign entity in the world, and this is completely unacceptable. I am going to do everything in my power and work as hard and tirelessly with integrity to represent you, to bring honest and proper representation and be a strong voice for you at Queen's Park. All right, so there you go. So you heard Charity McGrath and you heard what she plans to do. So if you happen to be from her constituency, you live in her area, you can contact her if you have any more questions on the number that we're going to provide for you. Thank you so much for being here. I look forward Thank to you. seeing you at Queen's Park. Thank you so much. All right. Don't go anywhere. We have lots more.